Hi everyone. Time to do a Christmas page. I started my page already and I just used some Lindy Stamp Gang and a nice, um, I believe it was just a scrapbook. It wasn't even a stencil, just a paper that looked like a stencil. And I sprayed over top of it around the edges of my page. And I believe it was denim blue, the spray. And um, what I'm doing right now is I've got a wet paintbrush and I'm just sectioning off the paper napkin and tearing it apart. It just makes it a little easier for tearing when you wet it. Um, this napkin, I already removed the backing so that the top layer was the only layer left. It's very see-through and um, this way you can see part of your background once it's been glued down. So I won't glue it down until I'm finished my sketch and I'm using a 2B, HB I believe it is, uh, pencil so it's not terribly dark and it'll be a little easier to erase if I should have to. And yes I do believe in erasing. Why not? If you don't like it, you should be able to erase it. Um, there you go, erasing. <laughs> now what I've done is I've used um, reference from an old um, decorative painting book that I had. Uh, Little Footprints is I believe what it was called. And I really liked it because of the winter scenes that they had in it. But I like to pick and... Um, and choose different elements out of different books or uh, to make my own scene basically and you can do that with pretty well any um, coloring books are great for uh, finding stuff for you to p find different things like birds or flowers pretty much anything um, and there's thousands of uh, coloring books now so you may as well use them as a reference also um, that's what I do is or you can if you don't feel like drawing then cut the actual thing out of your book and glue it onto your page it's <laughs> they're so versatile anymore they're just not a coloring book uh, this is the little book a bird I'm going to be uh, drawing but I'm going to make it into a chickadee um, I kind of call these guys little grumpy birds because they got a real little grumpy face <laughs> on them but I think they're so cute and um, I'm going to have him sitting on a branch, kind of uh, weighing the branch down because he's a little, little bit puffy. <laughs> and um, once I'm done uh, drawing this out, and I don't get really detailed in my drawing, just the basics of where, you know, everything has to go. You don't want to draw every single feather or... or um, you know, every leaf, that type of thing. So just draw it out because you will be painting over top of this and you will lose all that detail if you were to put it on. Now the paint I use is just your basic uh, um, craft paint. You can use any type you want. I like it because it has a matte finish. And when you close your pages in your journal, they will not stick together. Uh, so many people use the artist grade, and because of the acrylic, usually artist grade has a, a bit of a glossy finish, and it's when it does stick, the pages stick together, they do can rip, or um, you'll lose part of your paint in blotches. So. If you haven't tried the craft paint, give it a try. It's it's awesome. You don't have to get every color, just uh, your basic colors, and then make your own shades. Um, this here, I just used some raw umber, added a little bit of yellow to it to make it a little bit of a lighter uh, brown shade. And this is my base coat. So the way I paint usually is I look for my middle color whatever I'm painting with these branches it's uh, a basic mid-tone brown and I'll paint the whole limb in that unless it's got a very high um, uh, 
uh, highlight. Sometimes I won't paint that highlight with the middle color, but um, you can always go over it with white. But that's the great thing about acrylics is you can paint over. And with these uh, craft acrylics, they're more opaque than your um, artist grade. Artist grade tends to be a little bit more on the transparent side. So they're a little bit harder to cover things up. Um, now I've added a little bit more of the dark umber to that mid color and I'm painting a shadow on the bottom part of the limbs and the little twigs. And this will give my uh, limbs a more 3D look. As you can see here. So basically my light source is coming from above the, the uh, limb on the top of the page. And then I'll get either a lighter shade of brown and then I'll do some top highlights on top of the up branches and then that'll basically finish that branch. Now I'm going to do my um, cute little birdhouse here and I'm going to be doing it in a gray color and again I'm going to base coat it in a mid-tone gray. I'm not going to make, make a really uh, mixed up gray. I am going to leave it kind of loose looking so there will be a little bit of different tones of the mid gray so it'll have a little bit of darker streaks going through it maybe a little bit of white and the reason why I've done this is because it's wood and wood isn't an even shade of color because of um, weather and, and rain and moisture it tends to be blotchy so that's what I've done and as you can see I'm painting up and down not across because the wood grain will go in that direction. So it's kind of important to remember which way your your strokes paintbrush strokes are going because it can enhance whatever you're um, painting. I have a little tray around the bottom of the birdhouse and it's sitting on a little pole and because the birdhouse is sitting on top of the pole and the pole smaller than the birdhouse there'll be a shadow on the top part of that pole and also because of the roof there'll be a shadow underneath that roof and um, we'll have to mix a little bit of a watery mixture of um, a darker gray not necessarily uh, black I don't like to use black black uh, for tones but um, just add just a touch of uh, darker gray and then um, we'll enhance the uh, wood that way um, what I've got here is a bristle fan brush and I did not wet it before I dipped the tip of the fan brush in a light, light gray color. So I'm dry brushing um, the wood in a way that it makes it look like um, it would be the highlights of your wood grain. And then um, you can get a darker color of gray and do the same thing over top of that. And it gives it a really nice grain woodwork look. Uh, very simple technique and um, you can really play with it. You can add as much detail as you want. Um, you can also go back and use pen work with black pen to make really deep like you'd have cracks in the wood, that type of thing, and um, even highlight with different parts of uh, the wood.
Now I'm using a um, a sword brush, so it's it's a it's like a uh, slanted brush, but it's got a really nice tip on one ant one side of it. And what I do is I I'm using a very watered down mixture of the dark gray and I'm going underneath where the the roof would be so that would be the darkest shadow and then because the snow or water would have been sitting around the bottom of the uh, birdhouse it the wood would probably be, be darker because of uh, water staining and that type of thing just gives it a little bit of a, a realistic look course you have to do the inside of the hole in the birdhouse very dark because it hasn't got any sunlight going in there and it's looking pretty good just doing a little bit of touch-ups there with some more dark just to emphasize uh, the edges a little bit more shadowing And there's the uh, underneath would be darker because of that tray that's sitting on. So it doesn't take much. Um, but it adds a lot to your painting when you can do the shading properly. Again, now I'm doing... Uh, the bird and again this is also done in that way of a base coat and but this time um, if you look at a picture of a chickadee or, or whatever bird you want to be doing you'll see the uh, medium color will usually be a little bit darker so there is some gray in a chickadee um, it's kind of a creamy white, but there is a gray tinge to the underneath feathers, and that's what I've done here. And then I, what I do is I take a nice warm white, and I have a, a rigger brush, um, and I just uh, use that warm white and stroke on the feathers and, uh, in the way that the feathers would be um, laying on the bird so in this case it's up and down maybe a little to the sides just slightly and uh, I don't go to the very edge I, I more or less stick into the center and just a little bit um, towards the out, outer edge and then the same with the uh, well, dark gray I guess uh, just under his beak there he is and on his head so these are base coats and then I will um, finish them up with either a paint marker or if you have a really nice white uh, pen is good there's um, a Signo white pens those are really great they seem to go over this acrylic paint quite well and I like also using the um, was it poster paint markers by Sharpie? Um, I'm putting the snow on the top of the birdhouse. Now, if you really notice snow, it's not really white. Snow has a lot of shadowing in it. And really the only thing that is white is the highlights. The shadows are usually a, either a purple or kind of a slate purple blue color i do have a video on how to to paint snow in um, another youtube so if you're wanting to learn that um, check that out um, what i've done so far is just put the base coat again <laughs> base coat um, and i'll let it dry and then i'll come back to that now here's the napkins and I'm just using matte medium to glue them down and 
some of these pieces of napkins actually have little limbs, little sticks, twigs, um, and I'm using them to my advantage on the, the limbs that are painted. So I'm attaching the limbs that are on the um, napkin so that they look like they're attached to the limbs on the painting. So it turned out quite, quite neat, actually. Um, and they were really transparent, so the background did show through quite nicely. After you're done um, putting the napkins, just make sure you get, have a nice good coat of matte medium over top of the napkin, too. And that way you can still paint on top or use a marker, and um, it's not going to lift at all. Now this is the Sharpie paint marker that I'm using right now. Uh, black, it's I believe an extra fine tip. And I'm just doing very small uh, little ticks of little marks. But I'm the marks are being drawn in the way the feathers would be growing. And then along the uh, outer edge, just to make him fuzzy looking, um, <laughs> done some what I call as rogue feathers. They're just kind of crazy looking. Um, and along the outer edge is usually more concentrated. There you go. And as you get to the focal point of, of the bird, which was the top of the head in the black, it's not, the, the marks aren't as long. They're more dots than marks. And that's just um, perspective uh, as far as what you would view, because you're viewing the feathers straight on instead of um, to the side. And the same um, as far as around the, the outside edge of, of him along the light, there might be a few little flicks of black here and there on his body, and that's what I've done here. I like using a really fine marker, though. It's just, uh, it looks a lot nicer, more neater, a little more realistic than a fat marker. Um, this is a Signo um, white pen, and I'm doing the same thing as I did with the black. So small little marks, strokes going in the direction of the growth of the feathers and um, more concentrated on the outer edges than the um, inside. Uh, they're a little more shorter on the inside. Um, you don't want to completely cover the gray up around the edges, but just give enough that you basically see the growth and of the feathers and which way they're going. Um, well, here's when I'm using the black marker to make like cracks in the wood and um, where the one piece would join another. Your your wood wouldn't be um, a straight line where they would meet. It, it would be crooked or um, jagged looking. And it really, really adds a great realistic look to your wood when you do that. You can also make nail holes. Um, marks from the saw could be put in there. Um, Sometimes you, it's nice to define your edges where the um, shadows would be a little bit more intense. So you can put a little bit of that in there. This Sharpie marker seems to work quite nicely. Uh, don't try this with your felt tip Sharpie markers because they will die on you. Um, they cannot handle going over top of uh, acrylic paint. But this is a poster paint marker. So completely different. It does not have a felt tip on it. It's um, a roller ball inside. 
so it does not stop working. <laughs> there you go, a little flex, as you can see. Um, also, with the napkins, um, just to make them look a little more realistic, you can also um, use marker or pencil crayon and continue the leaves or the pine needles or the berries or whatever and um, just give it a little more realistic look to it instead of seeing where you've actually cut or torn the mat napkin and all of a sudden the leaf stops you can continue that leaf on and that gives it a not really nice finished look. Now here's I'm putting the white on top of the uh, mauve color that I initially put the base, base coat on and uh, this will be the white white that would be the reflection from the sun um, which would be the white. Um, you can always leave a little bit of that purple or blue whatever color you want to use. Um, slate blue is nice if you use uh, Kind of a purpley slate blue is the best color. Uh, you may, when you put it down, sometimes you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's really dark. How can that possibly be for snow? But once you get that white on, it's, it's amazing. Um, I'm using my fan brush here and just some really watered down white and I did some snowflakes. So that adds to it. It gives it another dimension. Um, this is a pencil crayon that I'm using and I'm just extending the pine needles out from that napkin that I use. So it just gives it like it's, is it napkin or is somebody drawn that? So it just gives it a really nice look. It's always good to try and finish up something past the napkin. So these pine needles and berries were the one thing that I did. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, it was a really quick page. Uh, sped it up a little bit for you because I think it took me about an hour and 50 minutes. So give it a try if you got some neat napkins out there. Um, Get, or get some coloring books and have fun. Till later, we'll see you again and have a great night.